Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I am joined by Mike Sizz, Josh Fink, and Andrew Munger, uh, some of the driving forces behind the Forged in Faith Experience, uh, Christians, Men, Retreat, Experience, Workshop. Um, these guys find deep meaning in hard work. Um, they are passionate about finding um, a person... Uh, they are passionate about finding an experience through working with their hands, getting down, getting dirty, um, finding a sense of purpose, and finding the values that drive um, men to be their best selves. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Forged in Faith experience. Um, so first, I want to thank you guys for being here. Uh, and can you guys tell me a little bit more about this experience and why you guys think it is important? Thanks, Corbin. Um, so the Forge and Faith experience is something that just um, kind of sp spun up from really a, a Friday morning coffee group. Um, a gentleman by the name of Mark Bohati was really instrumental in kind of pulling men together to, um, I mean, he was just a manly man, man, you know, and uh, he was able to pull men together uh, to try to, you know, find their faith. He was at daily mass. He just, he really was just a really good man to be around. And so we would have coffee with Mark and other guys just started coming in. And um, so we're, you know, we're up to a pretty big group of guys that show up on Friday mornings for coffee. Uh, we're blessed to be flexible that we can do that. But I think we'd all agree that um, it's kind of the highlight of our week of, you know, we, we really make time for that. Um, so, you know, it, it spun up from that. And just the idea that there's a lot of men, I think, that don't have that opportunity to bond with other good Christian men. And there's such a value to, that I think that we don't have uh, when we're not around other other men. You know, there's just this validation, this, I mean, you go to our coffee group, we're hugging, people are crying. I mean, it's just, just if we're praying. It's an amazing uh, gift. And I remember one of the guys that came for the first time was like, this is like gold. Like what you, what, what's going on here is like gold. And so it's such a blessing and we really treasure it. Um, Mark, uh, unfortunately, passed away um, this year. He, he passed away really right before we did our first Forge and Faith experience. So it was kind of um, uh, unfortunate that he didn't get to see it come to fruition on the earth, but I'm sure he was there with us. And so, uh, but it's just a, a way to get together and men to get together. And we do some manly things that um, men don't get to do um, very often. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's an, and we're, lead, you know, the Holy Spirit leads it. So we're just kind of helping, helping him do that. Great. So I want to get to know a little bit more about how did you guys get together? Where did this idea come from? Um, was it through your church? Was it through other organizations? How did you guys come together and get this idea really moving? Well, I think, um, you know, these two kind of just met randomly at like an art craft show, and then it turns out they're sort of neighbors. Um, you know, I've known Mike for a lot of years where our kids went to daycare together. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I was I drove out to his house, and I was just like, you know, I just, because uh, I'm a convert, and I just, I, I just went to his house. I'm like, I just feel like I need somebody to ask questions to. I've never really connected with a father, and he's like, well, hey, we do coffees on Fridays. Come on over. You know, it was just three or four of us, and then um, everybody just kind of found maybe one or two guys that just needed a little something extra of, of guys just getting together to talk on those Fridays. Um, and so that group has grown. There's, you know, the text thread can get a little out of control when you got 18 guys texting <laughs> in memes and, and doing those sort of things. Um, so it's a little hard to follow sometimes. Um, so when we were talking, it, it, it originally probably kind of started as more doing like a father-son retreat. Like, what can we do to teach our kids or kids that don't have dads in the home? And then it kind of like, well, we should probably try to get ourselves figured out first. Let's try to help the men here. Let's see if we can just get like a men's retreat going where it's a weekend where we get away and you can just, you know, you're out in the forest doing manly things. We're shooting guns. We're forging stuff in the fire. We're cooking, cooking barbecue. Um, you know, barbecue feeds the soul. It's just, it's different than cooking or getting a pizza. It's just, you know, when you put that work and time into it, you know, smoking something for 12 hours, it's just different. Um, so that's kind of where we decided, hey, let's just do a men's weekend where you can get away. You can listen to the speakers. You can not listen to the speakers. You can just go walk around the Oaks and just hang out and be by yourself and listen to your own thoughts for a little bit. So, um, you know, we kind of talked about it for a while. Well, we've been talking about it for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, but Matt Kleinschmidt finally 
um, has kind of been spearheading. He's the one that's very organized. Our first meeting with him, I think we got farther in planning this thing in 10 minutes than we probably had the year before. <laughs> They're all just like, ooh, let's do this, something shiny, let's do this, you know. And he's like, nope, let's talk about this. Let's, you know, try to get it organized. So it's just finally getting there where, you know, we just did it in September and everybody's like, oh, this is amazing. We just went out for a couple of days. You don't got to think about home. You don't got to think about work. You know, you just no real distractions and you're just kind of hanging out together, which I think um, just a lot of guys in general don't do. Well, they're doing it, but they're slamming beers at, right. at the sports right. bar. Well, you're not having deep conversations there. You're not really having building friendships. You can't really ask, hey, I've been thinking about this. What are your thoughts on really any topic? Because, you know, sometimes our topics on Fridays are, you know, it's fart jokes and sports the whole time. <laughs> Or then the next time it's all like very religious questions of spiritual guidance. And then the next time it's like, oh, you know, my dad's sick or my mom's sick, or, you know. So it's just such a array of topics that we cover that you're not getting those talks at the sports bar on Friday night at 1030. Yeah. You know, so it's just a way for, I think, all of us to get together and, yeah. and talk about those things that you necessarily don't want to talk to your wife about or your buddy at work you know so right so it sounds like this is uh, a, a unique men's group different than than one that I think most guys are probably used to um, and I'm curious how has each of your backgrounds whether if that be in working with your hands or on a farm or um, anything like that how has your background really influenced um, how you see this group going forward so I'll, I'll talk a little bit, uh, this is Andrew, I'll talk a little bit about um, that from my aspect. So um, as this Friday group grew and, um, you know, we saw more fruit being produced from this group and uh, the friendships being made, um, we just started having conversations about, you know, what do we all feel like is lacking in our lives? What, what do we wish we could do to fellowship with men more at a deeper level? Um, and the topic of working with our hands came up and we all kind of share that bond and that passion for working with our hands and connecting to nature, connecting to real things in the, you know, in times of technology here. So I've always been interested in, in blacksmithing and forging and making knives and um, I established Defensor Forge about 10 years ago and um, then so the name Defensor Forge comes from part of my military background. I was Air Force Security Forces, and their motto is Defensor Fortis, which means strong defender in Latin. So I took the defender portion. So really, it's, it means defender forge. And it's just kind of a theme that we have. You know, as men, we're here to be defenders. We're here to stand up for people who can't stand up for themselves. We're here to stand up for, um, for babies in the womb. We're here to stand up for the vulnerable. Um, so that's kind of a, a theme and, and a, you know, a core value that we hold. Um, and from there, we started talking about, okay, you know, <laughs> we started seeing similarities between our faith and our craft. And for me, it was, I look at forging from multiple perspectives, but um, I just thought it was really, really neat how you could take your energy that God has given you, you know, use some heat and, and use your energy to, to make something through forging, the forging process that um, might have been a piece of scrap steel and in the end it becomes something beautiful and something very useful uh, the same way that God can change us um, you know this whole year has been a little bit like this for me and I know some of the other guys have too but uh, I feel like I've been in that fire this year and I've been you know being beat on and, and formed and it's not comfortable um, you, you really don't like going through it, but in the end, I think God is, you know, working on us all, and in the end, we're going to come out of the process something better and something that, somebody that He wants us to be. So there's a lot of analogies between between forging and my faith, um, and that's kind of how how my craft of forging and making knives and everything tied into the whole theme. Yeah, well, I think it ties in beautifully. I mean, yeah, the, talk about analogies. That's that's really wonderful. Being forged in fire. I mean, the the tribulations, the, the stress of life, everything. Um, yeah, I think that's something that men need in today's world. So I guess broadly speaking, what is your guys' vision for this experience, forged in faith? What do you guys have uh, uh, in mind for the future? What would you guys like to, how would you like to see this grow? Yeah, um, 
I, you know, that's something that we, we've continually talked about and um, like we'll have ideas that come up and we're like, oh yeah, we should try to figure out how to do that. But I, I think really, um, we're really letting the Holy Spirit try to lead this. And I think, uh, and I had mentioned to somebody recently, I said, you know, if, if we do one more, re, you know, experience here on the 13th and that's it, well, then that was all that we needed to do. Maybe there was some guy in that, that retreat that needed this. And so now we're done. And so God's going to use somebody else to do something different. So we don't know where this is going to go exactly. Um, my my hope for it would be that, um, and I think our hope for it would be that this really reaches um, reaches out and, and touches a lot of men because I, I feel like this is, there's just such a need for it. And, you know, I do leather work. And so I, you know, we teach classes and things like that. And so we'll have guys that come in with their son or something and they work on a leather wallet or a belt or something like that. And I, it, it's pretty un, unanimous that they all are like, I want to do this. You know, like I want to do this more than just this two hours that I'm here today. I, like I love working with my hands. I took the day off or whatever, and I'm here with my son, and we're like using our fingers and getting dirty and sweating. And so, uh, you know, God, God said work is not bad. You know, he gives us work to do to, to fulfill us. And so um, that's really where I think that, the vision for this can go a lot of different ways, but I, I think um, Andrew being military, um, I think there's a lot of guys that are veterans that could, that could really uh, benefit from something like this, um, maybe to work through different uh, things that if they need healing or if they have PTSD or something, this is a, a, an avenue for that. Uh, another a good buddy of ours that goes to coffee, John Grunemeyer, uh, sat with us and talked to us about his vision of having a program that would help his son who's a teenager become a man you know and so there's, there's this lack of that in our society uh, at least in the west here that that potentially you don't have that uh, like a, another culture might have some sort of a ritual um, you go kill a lion or something and then you that that's your like detachment from your mother now you're a man and now you go to your father for things and, and so there's this this thing that he was recognizing that there there's no way to to get that boy to become a man. Like you're, you're off to the high school and then to college, but maybe they're floundering around with never really feeling like they are good enough for a man. So I think John really had some uh, good thoughts on maybe how to make this potentially like a father-son thing too. Uh, maybe we branch out into different areas with regards to um, a father-daughter thing. Maybe there's a, a, you know, our wives are very instrumental in letting us do this. And, and I know Josh has a you know story with his wife and going through some suffering. And so maybe there's something for them too. Maybe there's a way to uh, do something with, with women and, and mothers. So um, I don't know if you guys have any other thoughts too on, on the future, but. Yeah, I think uh, Josh said earlier, um, you know, we c originally kind of started this as, you know, focused on how, how do we organize and, you know, bring up our sons in a manly godly catholic way and um josh made the good point we kind of pumped the brakes a little bit and i think some of us said well i think we need to get ourselves figured out first mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we felt like the holy spirit was leading us first was you know <clears throat> you guys get this going it's gonna you know it's gonna lift us up as the organizers and the the folks who put this on um, as well as everybody who attends so i think our approach is that we you know we focus on um, the core group that we have and the men that we that we are blessed to have attend uh, and from there there are a lot of opportunities there's a veterans outreach that I is close to my heart that we'd like to get into um, you know we threw the idea around of having a putting on a, a mother's day luncheon or something or breakfast out at the oaks and you know the men are there to to cook the breakfast for the women so there's a lot of, of opportunities and a lot of thoughts that we have about how we can involve the whole family in in this experience eventually uh, but we're starting from a foundation of of the 24 men so well that sounds wonderful um so speaking of this retreat experience um forge in faith x when is the next experience um do you know who the speakers are going to be um can people still sign up? Can people still join? Um, what's the what's the details on that? Uh, September thirteenth is actually when we're doing the next one. Thirteenth and fourteenth. Yep, thirteenth and fourteenth. So mm -hmm. we got guys kind of show up about six o'clock. Um, that way, it's kind of caps the end of the week. Um, show up out there at the Oaks, and then we shuttle everybody back and set up their tent. Um, you know, last time I was cooking, so we cooked supper, and then we. Um, like we said, we kind of just do the 24 guys that are out there. Um, so we 
you know, we ate. We had a speaker that night. Uh, this year, or this fall, we're having Larry Logston. He's coming to speak. He's a, actually a teacher at Pius. Uh, I'm going to kind of talk about his faith and experiences, those sort of things. Um, and everybody can just kind of walk around, and we get the campfire going and just sit around the campfire. Mike plays guitar. Larry happens to sing. So last time they just kind of sat and sang, and guys just talked. Um, you know, just kind of decompress and do nothing, you know. Like literally just do nothing. Not on your phone doing nothing. Just sitting there and listening to nothing. Um, uh, you know, so then we got uh, Deacon Matt Hecker. He's going to come talk this time. Um, and uh, Michael Donlin, who actually teaches OCI classes. So just kind of, you know, I, I think we're, we're trying to keep it open. Yes, we're all Catholic guys. It's kind of a Catholic umbrella over the whole thing. Um, but it's not like if you're not Catholic, you can't come. You know, we could really care less what religion you are. As long as you're just kind of going the same path we are of being a man, being a father, being a good brother, those sort of things. Um, and if you want to talk about becoming Catholic, we'll talk to you about it. Most half of us are probably converts anyway. Um, you know, so that's kind of how the weekend goes and we get up early, um, have breakfast, have a couple speakers, go to the shooting range go to the forge um i think it sounds like we're trying to get we're getting mass this saturday yep, i think we've got that finalized so we'll have mass with yeah. father reddinger saturday yeah great confessions maybe too hopefully but um and then you know we we, we you can register by going to the website forgeinfaithx.com and there's still spots available and if if it fills up or you're not able to make it this time we are already planning our our next event in june um i think that's the I won't say a date yet because I don't know if we finalized it. But but anyway, so if you, you know, and you can always reach out to us, go to the website. There's an email address there. If there's anything that you feel like God is asking you to, like, um, talk to us about, help us with, um, be a part of it, um, that's, you know, you, we're, we're really welcoming anything that, that people have for ideas at this point, too. So it's pretty Or if they want to donate. Yeah. You know, Take some um, that's kind of the thing, too, is we're not charging guys to come. It's just, um, you know, because we don't want that to be holding somebody back um so we just show up and if you feel like making a donation at the end um you know then do so or if somebody can't come they're like hey that sounds great i want to donate a package of hot dogs or something we'll take um pretty much whatever you got so wonderful well if you want to learn more about the retreat or the experience go to forcedinfaithx.com uh you can figure out more information. You can maybe find where to register. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to these three guys. Mike Siz, Josh Fink, and Andrew Munger, thank you guys so much for being with me thank today. You, Corbin. Uh, and thank you guys for what you are doing. Uh, this is something that I think is so so needed in today's world. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.